The next step in building a particle system is actually adding the particles to the movie clip or to the stage. So we're working with the same FLA here. We've got the same robot. I'll come back to these guidelines in a minute to explain those. Our document class is making the robot move. So it's got an enter frame event listener that's calling this function once per frame and it's just changing the exposition. It's adding the speed of the robot to the exposition and then checking to see when we reach the left or right margins of the stage calling the flip method which is inside the robot. Inside the robot we have the flip method here which is changing the X scale property to make him face a different direction and it's multiplying his speed times negative one. Multiplying the speed times negative one will make the robot start moving in the opposite direction. The robot cog class, which we haven't really looked at yet, will have two variables here. There's one static variable called number of cogs. This is the total number of cogs that have been added to the stage. And then we've got another value called max cogs which is currently set to 40 and that is the maximum number of cogs that we want to appear on the stage or the maximum number of particles at any one time. Now there's a difference here var and const. Const is a constant. This is it's like a variable except the value is never allowed to change. The naming convention is that you write it all in capitals and then it can have any data type just like any other object. So we're creating a value that cannot be changed, setting it to 40 and saying that's the maximum number of cogs that you are allowed to have on the stage. I've set this one to public because it's constant, it can't be changed anyway. The other one is a variable, it can be changed. I set it to private so that only in here can we change it. So I'm going to add into here the code to increment number cogs so this dot number cogs, we are going to increment that. Every time the constructor function gets called, this number will be incremented. And because it's a static variable, it means it's shared across every instance. So every cog will instantly know how many cogs there are on the stage at the same time. For the number of cogs to be read by another class, we have to create the get function. So we will create a public function get number or num cogs. We have to use a different name and it will return an unsigned integer. You can see up at the top here number of cogs is an unsigned int so we're going to do the same thing here. Return this dot number cogs. Similar name but it is different. Okay, now inside of our robot class we can find out how many there are. The public constant max cogs we can find out, so we can at any point find out have we reached the maximum number of cogs allowed on the stage at this current time. Alright, so inside the robot class we want to create a brand new function to add these particles. We need to import flash events. We need to create an event listener. So this add event listener event.enterframe will create a function called add cog. Then we'll actually create that function. Public function add cog. Now, because this is being called by an event listener, it will automatically pass a variable to the function. So we have to give it a container to hold that. Alright, events being passed in here. Inside this function, we want to add a cog. So we are going to say RC is a robot cog, new robot cog. That will call the constructor, which increments the number of number of cogs on the stage. We want to 
put this on the stage. So add child cog. Now this refers to the current class, which is robot, right here. This is not the stage. This isn't the document class. However, every display object has a built-in property called stage that will refer to the stage and give us a place where we can add things. So we're adding that new cog onto the stage. We're going to set its X property to be the same as the robot. We're going to set its Y property the same as the robot. And then we will try this out. Oh, we did have one mistake right here. The error message is showing up as regarding number cogs. We can actually double click on these error message to take us to the problem. Because number cogs is a static variable, it doesn't belong to any one instance. So we don't use the keyword this in front of it. And the same thing on this line right here. Okay, there we are. So now the robot will continue to go back and forth, back and forth, and it's adding a new particle at the X position of the robot and the Y position of the registration mark of the robot every single frame, again and again and again and again. We have not added the limitation. To do that, we're going to have to go back into here and around this bit of code, we're going to put an if statement to check and see if we've reached that max cog number. So robot cog is the class name, numcogs. This is a static variable, so we can access that. And we also want to compare and see if that is less than robot cog dot max cogs. So our if statement wraps around all that bit of code. So we're only going to add 40 at one time. One last error message here. In the if statement back here, I referred to this as a method instead of as a variable. It was a method, but we've got the get method. So get numcogs is going to be seen as a variable. So back here, robotcog numcogs less than robotcog maxcogs. And because this numcogs method is shared amongst all of them, it's not an instance method. This is a static method. So this function is shared by all copies of the cog. And there we go. So we should hit the maximum number of 40 and then it stops. If we change that number, we say that we can have up to 140 and run it. There it goes. Continues to add, 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 add until it hits 140 right here. In our next video, we'll talk about controlling the depth so that the robot is on top of the cogs. The cogs are appearing behind the robot. And we'll talk about making these cogs appear at a more logical place and bounce around.